uh, call the joint meeting of the, uh, the special joint meeting of the Ma uh, mayor council and the planning board to order. Uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, to the flag. United, States United States of America, America. And to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> all right, can I have a uh, roll call of the mayor and council? Liz, you're muted. Yep. Sorry, shall I read the statement first before roll call? Well, it's, uh, it's, uh, let's do that first. Yes, thank you. Okay. In compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, adequate notice of this special meeting of the Borough Council and Madison Planning Board was provided by transmitting a copy of the meeting notice to the Madison Eagle, Morris County Daily Record, and Star Ledger, posting a copy on the bulletin board at the main entrance of Borough Hall, and filing a copy in the office of the clerk, all on May 10, 2021. Copies of said notice were made available to members of the general public. And now we'll do roll call. Mayor and Council first. Okay, Mayor Conley. Here. Ms. Bailey. Here. Ms. Fern. Here. Mr. Hoover. Here. Ms. Cohen. Here. Mr. Landrigan. Is Mr. Landrigan with us? No. Okay. No, okay. And I know um, Ms. Ehrlich is absent excused. And the roll call for the uh, planning board. Okay. So, um, Mayor Conley again. <laughs> yes, still here. And, and Miss Bailey. Here. Um, Mr. Fleming. Here. Mr. Forte. Here. Mr. Garibay. Here. Mr. Harris. Here. Miss Huber. Here. Mr. Limbach. Here. And Mr. Tom Balakian. All right, uh, agenda review. This is a uh, basically one, one item of business for uh, both both bodies, and this is to um, review and approve the uh, revised housing element and fair share plan. Uh, and um, the planning board will vote first to adopt the resolution, and then the uh, borough council will um, endorse the uh, re resolution for, with theirs. Um, there is on the agenda a listing for uh, one round of public comment, but uh, we will allow the public to comment at, after the discussion on the housing element fair share plan. So you'll be able to comment on this topic in particular and then can follow up on any other topics. Anything else for uh, go to the order? All right. See, we've got uh, Susan Beth to uh, present, or Beth? I, I can just do a... Okay, yeah. I'll just do a... There's, there you are, Susan. To fight. We'll, yep. yep. We'll get Beth. Beth, are, are you... I'm here. Okay, we can hear you. Okay, oh, yeah. I can hear yeah. you before. Okay, great. Um, so what's before uh, the planning board and the council tonight is consistent with everything uh, that you have heard uh, previously related to the steps that the borough has taken to meet its um, commitment in the uh, settlement agreement that uh, the court executed. Um, and uh, in terms of the planning board, uh, the planning board did hold a hearing on uh, an earlier version of the housing element and fair share plan that with one very minor detail is the same uh, document, uh, the same strategies um, that uh, the planning board uh, reviewed at its uh, January, I believe, uh, public hearing. And uh, that one detail relates to uh, really how uh, units are applied to crediting. It doesn't change the numbers. Um, and Beth will explain that in, in great detail, but just from a big picture perspective, all the presentations that Beth and I had given either to council or on planning board uh, in the past, you're gonna see you know, uh, the same information uh, presented tonight. So I'll, I'll toss it off to Beth. 
Thanks, Susan. Um, so this evening, as, uh, as we've sort of heard already, there are two actions to be taken, one by the planning board, one by the governing body. I have, uh, for this, really for the sake of the record, because I think that everybody uh, on the screen here is pretty familiar with this, but I have a, a short presentation uh, just to, to go through and also uh, highlights the change, the changes that are in this plan and, uh, and we'll give those in the public that are uh, watching us a little bit of context as to what we're doing here this evening. So if folks are comfortable with that, I can uh, go ahead and share my screen. Yes, please do. All right, here we go. Beth, we're going to mark into uh, the record for the planning board this report as exhibit B for board one. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, so uh, I've, I've geared this presentation for, uh, there we go. Uh, I've geared this presentation to be suitable not only for the planning board and for the governing body. So I think for the planning board in particular, since since you have all done this uh, this here a similar hearing to this in January, this may be a bit re repetitive. Um, so I'm sorry for that, uh, board members. But um, as uh, as many of you know, we're here trying to finish up our housing element fair share plan process. All of this started in 2015, like Mad when Madison like most other communities in the state uh, uh, entered this court process to essentially tell the court that they wanted to comply with their affordable housing obligation, adopt a housing element, and get that all important immunity from builders remedy litigation through 2025. Madison, as I said, did that. We did so successfully, excuse me, in the sense that we settled with Fair Share Housing Center, which is a necessary step to avoid a trial We've done that. And since that step was taken, since the, the settlement occurred between the borough and fair share, there have been a lot of actions taken. For example, we've uh, gone through a fairness hearing. We've had that agreement uh, approved by the court. And once we did that first step, it then began really a cascade of additional steps, which is to implement the settlement agreement. So things like adopting this housing element and fair share plan, adopting ordinances to create the new zoning that's necessary and, and set forth in the housing element, as well as the settlement, uh, adopting uh, resolutions, working with developers for 100% affordable housing sites. Um, there have been a number of actions taken and it is, uh, this step this evening, the, the step by the planning board, the step by the governing body, should be just about the last step for the formal implementation of the housing element fair share plan. This is obviously a continuing process as we do monitoring and there's always ongoing project work that needs to be done. But in terms of the, uh, the significant steps towards implementation and providing the basis for that affordable housing to be created, be, this evening is one of the last few steps. Um, and so once we complete this, as I'll go into a little bit more detail later, once the planning board adopts the housing element, once the governing body endorses the housing element, that will set the stage for the court to review and hopefully approve our housing element and fair share plan. And in fact, that may happen tomorrow uh, at court. And so, uh, we will uh, be well on our way to that judgment of repose and that immunity through 2025 in the next, uh, the next couple of days, in fact. So as I said, our, our housing plan really is intended to implement that, uh, that settlement agreement. And in fact, you guys have done uh, the bulk of the work already with that January adoption of the housing plan. Now, this housing element, and fair share plan this evening is an amended version. This includes all of the same documents and implementation actions that were set forth in that January 2021 housing element and fair, fair share plan, including the items on the screen here. So things like um, the demographic analysis, how we satisfy each component of the affordable housing obligation, our trust fund documents, and a variety of other administration documents to ensure that the units, the affordable units that are created are, are managed and administered properly. Now, our obligation in this amended plan remains the same as it was in the January 2021 plan, which is the same as that which is set forth in our settlement agreement. It includes 
the 21 unit rehabilitation obligation, the 86 unit prior round obligation, and the 500 unit third round obligation. But that third round obligation was adjusted downward to 147 unit unmet, excuse me, RDP. And then that remaining uh, third round obligation, the, the portion outside of the RDP is of course the unmet need. And so those numbers and those strategies uh, with the one exception I'm gonna go through remain the same in this housing plan. <clears throat> but just as an overview for, uh, for the, the, uh, the goals or the, uh, the strategy for satisfying our affordable housing obligation. So first, the borough looks to scatter affordable housing sites throughout the borough as much as possible and as much as appropriate, uh, given that the downtown holds uh, the key to public transit as well as shops and services. Um, we also sought to, uh, to uh, concentrate zoning amendments that would have uh, created a mix of uses or increased density towards uh, mixed use and multifamily zones that were existing in the community. We also sought to satisfy our remaining obligation with a 100% municipally sponsored affordable housing project, which I know folks are, are familiar with uh, as well over um, on Walnut Street and over at Community Place. And so at the end of the day, our strategy left the borough with a rather small number of new affordable housing units that needed to be created. Yes, we have the 100% uh, the affordable housing project, and we also have the Madison Mall apartments. And between those two, that satisfied the need to create new affordable units in order to meet that RDP. Now, like I said, the purpose of this evening for the planning board is to address the amended housing element fair share plan. And as we heard from Susan, these amendments are pretty minor. They're, they're about as minor as they get, if I'm honest. So we have no new sites, we have no new zoning. Really all we did was reshuffle some credits. We reshuffled the uh, Sunrise Assisted Living Units uh, from the RDP, meaning that, meeting that 147 unit RDP and we moved them to the unmet need. In order to continue to meet the unmet need, we uh, replaced those credits with similar credits, those from Rexford Tucker. This is an, that's an existing 100% senior affordable housing project. Now, the reason why we did this is because as we uh, were bearing down on the final court hearing where the court reviews and approve, presumably approves our housing element and fair share plan, that means that the court is not only looking at simply the housing element, the words that, uh, you know, the pages that Susan and I put together, they're also looking at all of the crediting documentation to ensure that each unit has been administered properly and is uh, reserved for the appropriate household type, meaning low or moderate uh, income households. And what was discovered is that the Sunrise Assisted Living Facility, frankly, like, most assisted living facilities in the state, uh, it is becoming uh, difficult to gather the appropriate or the necessary documentation to ensure that that project is eligible for credit. <clears throat> so for a little bit of background, assisted living facilities, they are required by state lic licensing to reserve 10% of their beds for Medicaid eligible residents. Those Medicaid eligible residents also happen to meet the low income requirements in New Jersey for um, our COA affordable housing. And so what typically happens is municipalities with assisted living facilities uh, propose credit for those facilities. They work with the assisted living uh, providers to obtain a deed restriction that commits to continuing that 10% that number, that number of beds uh, as uh, being available for um, yes, for Medicaid patients consistent with their licensing, but importantly, available for low and moderate income residents. And that's when uh, things got more difficult here in Madison. So I've been working with the folks in charge of the Sunrise Assisted Living Facility, but uh, to date have been unable to, uh, to get a deed restriction out of, those, out of that organization. Um, it's, uh, it's certainly not, uh, the possibility is certainly not closed, it's just taking some additional time 
And so what we've done in order to eliminate the risk of losing credits for the assisted living facility because we can't produce proper documentation, we have moved those credits from the RDP to the unmet need and swap them with some surplus senior, senior credits at the Ruxford Tucker project. This works because uh, assisted living, or excuse me, unmet need is a, uh, is a, yes, it's a required component of an affordable housing program for a vacant land community like Madison. However, it's subject to uh, a different set of regulations and really a lesser set of regulations. There's uh, less strict requirements in order to generate unmet need credit. And so it makes sense that we would move this assisted living facility, which we may have trouble receiving a deed restriction from to the unmet need uh, category because it's subject to these, uh, to these less strict requirements. I do wanna note, however, that even though we're moving it to unmet need, I will uh, one, continue to pursue a deed restriction in hopes of uh, receiving that from the facility but two, if they're unwilling or unable to provide a deed restriction, the borough will just simply continue annually to confirm that it is, uh, that it continues to have a license and continues to comply with that licensing requirement for the Medicaid vets. And doing, uh, doing one of those two things, the deed restriction or the ongoing monitoring will ensure that the project remains eligible for credit against the unmet need. And we know that the Rexford Tucker project is already eligible for credit, not only for the unmet need, but also the RDP. And so this swap uh, uh, brings the plan closer to compliance and uh, brings the plan closer to uh, um, uh, being organized in such a way that those credits, which are uh, maybe a little bit more troublesome, like these assisted living uh, credits, are placed in the unmet need, which as I said, has uh, less stringent requirements. And so that's really the, the only change where I said uh, several minutes of talking, but at the end of the day, we're just simply swapping the assisted living credits for the Rexford Tucker credits uh, in the third round from uh, swapping them from RDP to the unmet need. That's really the only change set forth in the housing plan, in this amended housing plan. And so all of the sites and strategies that you see on this, map, which is included in the housing plan, they're unchanged. They've uh, remained the same even through this amendment. And so uh, in addition to satisfying each component of our obligation, the housing element and fair share plan include all of the administration and monitoring requirements that are necessary uh, pursuant to COA's rules and uh, uh, various other affordable housing regulations, as well as the settlement agreement. And uh, our next steps include um, hopefully planning board adoption of the amendment this evening, hopefully borough council uh, endorsement of the entire uh, amended housing element and fair share plan since the council had not previously uh, taken this step back in January. And then from there, we go to the court to try to secure, as I said, that all important judgment of repose. Uh, and that actually begins tomorrow, uh, uncoincidentally, where we have a court hearing and we'll, uh, We'll uh, hear the judge's uh, response to the documents that have been submitted. Uh, and with that, that's the end of my short presentation, but I'm certainly happy to answer any questions. Any board members? Any questions? questions? Yep. yep. We'll start with the board members. Sorry. Go ahead, Steve. The yeah. council members have questions. All right, um, we do have um, some public in the in the audience. If any uh, members of the public wish to comment or have questions, this is your time. If you're on the phone, you hit star nine. If you are online, hit the uh, raise hand. As always with council meetings, the uh, comments must be kept to, we try, ask you to try to keep the three minutes, but ask, we'll give you one minute. Is there anyone in the uh, public wishing to comment? or ask questions. Being none, I close the public comment and I will hand it back to uh, the uh, planning board chair, Steve Kambalaki. Great, okay everybody, so um, seems pretty clear cut. Um, 
unless the board has any um, discussions on this, um, I think we're ready to entertain a motion to adopt this amended housing element fair share plan. Does somebody want to make that motion? And if I could, Mr. Chairman, also to authorize the board's resolution based on that action to also be adopted this evening. Thank you. So, we're, so what we're doing is uh, adopting it and memorializing our decision in writing in one fell swoop. So who, who wants to have the honor of making that motion? I'll move it. I'll second. All right, so was that Anne. Peter? Was that Peter and Ann? Yep. Okay. Um, Frank, we have a roll call. Okay, Mayor Conley? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Fleming? Yes. Mr. Forte? Yes. Mr. Garibay? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Ms. Huber? Yes. Mr. Limbaugh? Yes. Is Mr. Limbaugh with us? He's muted. Um, oh, okay. yes. Sorry yes. about that. And Mr. Tambalaki? Yes. All right. The okay. motion is adopted. The amended housing element fair share plan is uh, passed to the council for its ratification. All right. All right. So we are um, now uh, tasked with the um, endorsement of the fair of the action just taken by the planning board. I'm asking for a motion on resolution 159 2021, a resolution of the borough of Madison, the county of Morris, the state of New Jersey, endorsing the 2021 housing element fair share plan adopted by the borough planning board on January 19th, 2021, and amended and readopted by the planning board on May 26, 2021. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Any council discussion? Roll we'll call vote, please. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. You said yes. Yes. Okay, let me say yes there. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, and just so for Susan and Beth, thank you so much for all of your hard work. It's such a professional product. I mean, the borough was in really good hands with, with such capable planners and um, uh, you really helped us guide us through the process for the last couple of years and uh, the borough owes you a debt. So thank you. Yeah. I will. Good job. Great job. Here, here. Echo here, that here. and we will be uh, looking forward to our court hearing tomorrow afternoon. Uh, with that, are, is there anyone in the public wishing to comment and on any other topic? Please raise your hand at this point. Seeing none. I will entertain a uh, motion to adjourn the joint meeting of the uh, mayor, council, and the planning board. So moved. A second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much for your time and uh, be well. Take care. Be well.